This is the Straight Truth Podcast, biblical answers to difficult questions from a Christian worldview. Josh, from time to time, I have the the joy of uh, questioning you. And um, this one's been on my mind for some time. One of the one of the joys of knowing you and your wife, Jennifer, and watching your lives is to see how the Lord has sovereignly formed your family. Mm-hmm. Um, you've adopted several children, mm-hmm. and I know that, that someone watching us has experienced, um, in, in some ways, the challenge, uh, in some mm-hmm. cases, a sadness, not able to conceive children, mm-hmm. and, and maybe they're curious about the process of adoption, or maybe they're pursuing it. Um, could you just talk about your journey and mm. also offer advice to people yeah. in, in this area? Yeah, good. Well, I, I'm interested in your your thoughts on this area too, of course. But uh, in God's providence, He has uh, shut down one door and opened up another door. Mm. And this was not uh, a plan by us. But um, when we got married, we thought you know we would have children the natural way, and thought we would plan it out and do it, you know, to, to start having children a couple of years down the road. What ended up, we, we heard a few sermons on the topic of adoption from Ephesians 1, and uh, that really had an impact on us. And we thought, you know what, we should consider adoption, maybe even at the same time that we, that we would like to have children. And so um, what it is, is that God opened one door and just closed the other one mm-hmm. in His providence. And so there was, there was a little bit of pain in the sense like, well, um, uh, you know, you, you might not have children that have the same hair color as you or might not yeah. look like your wife or something along those lines. But, but really, we had tremendous joy in the fact that the Lord very quickly opened up the, um, the pathway to adoption. And then over a series of years, uh, very, very quickly, I mean, within, you know, four or five years, we had four children. Mm-hmm. And um, so it became a, hu- a tremendous and huge blessing uh, to us as they are uh, today. Um, I, I think of adoption, what made the biggest impact on Jen and I early on was the fact that adoption is really God's idea. Mm-hmm. Ephesians 1 says that He uh, chose us before the foundation of, uh, of the world, and then in His love He predestined, he predestined us for adoption That's right. uh, as sons uh, to the Father, of course, through Jesus Christ. And I had never thought of this, this is going back many years, but I had never thought of adoption in those terms, that this is God's idea, and that what takes place with us in salvation and God bringing us into his family, we who were strangers and aliens and separated from the, pro- from the promises of God, that he adopts us into his family through our union with Christ, his son. And how adoption, physical adoption today is such a wonderful and beautiful picture of that, that our children that we adopt that were once um, maybe um, orphans or um, estranged from um, their birth family line mm. can now be brought into a family and truly be their children. And I can truly call this, this one my son or daughter, and they can truly call my wife and I their father and, and, uh, and mother. And I love that yeah. emphasis, and, and uh, it's right, but sometimes it, it's rare. The, the, uh, the emphasis that you just mentioned these are your children. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it's, that's right. it, it's not pretend. No, it's it's reality, and um, and that's a mindset that, that people sometimes struggle with. They do. So, yeah. and I know that's one of the things that has to be a challenge for you sometimes. Mm-hmm. Is is while that's real for you and your children, mm-hmm. people and the way they speak of adoption, mm-hmm. the way they think about it, sometimes they they haven't grasped that yet. Mm-hmm. What are some unique challenges mm-hmm. to adoption mm-hmm. that, that you and Jen have had to? wrestle through what are some of the unique joys i oh, mean yeah. just just joys right. that belong to that yeah to that process yeah well on on that point it's mostly in my experience um just the language people are not familiar with yeah. when they want to discuss our story with us so though i'm a little bit older now but when i was younger and maybe it looked like i was still in child rearing years they would say uh, do you ever want children of your own? Yeah. And I would often respond, well, I have children of my own. And, it, and they say, oh, of course, that, that's not what I meant. I meant right. what you mean. And it's just a matter of language, um, understanding that these truly are our children. Mm. And that, that truly is one of the joys, too, is, is looking down at my four African-American children and saying, these, these are my children. They, right. they bear the family name. Um, and, uh, and, and as you mentioned, Josh, and, and this can get lost on us, it's amazing to me how we can intellectually um, glory in the sovereignty of God mm. and forget mm. that these children were meant to belong to you and Jen yeah. 
from the foundation of yeah. the world. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really, really uh, amazing. And of course, this also uh, mirrors what God does in the gospel and, mm-hmm. and, and bringing all these different ethnicities and tribes and tongues and nations into one family mm-hmm. through the process of adoption. So I guess in a small way, our family mirrors that in that you have these children that are uh, clearly um, um, not, uh, they, they weren't born into our family by natural means. They were adopted into mm-hmm. our family, but that mirrors the gospel so beautifully. So that that is one of the joys uh, I often sit and I'm staring at one of my kids playing and I think, how wonderful is this that the Lord brought us together? And uh, and maybe one of them was, um, you know, was in a destitute situation over here and another one yeah. was in a bad one over here and yet the Lord has given them a house and a home and given us the joy of being parents and raising them as well. And it's just a beautiful, uh, wonderful experience. What would you say to the people who, who've desired to adopt but they have found it to be costly? Yeah. So the financial challenges yeah. You know, mm-hmm. associated with it? Yeah, we get that question sometimes too, and I would exhort some patients first and foremost, but then secondly, I would exhort them to be um, fervent in prayer and also in the relationships with their church. We, we could have never come up with the financial means to, um, to adopt because it is very expensive. You're paying agencies, sometimes uh, other countries, uh, in order to adopt. And, um, and even governments, taxes, things like that, court fees, it just gets very, very costly. And we would never have been able to do that without the support of our church. Mm. Um, not only this church, the previous church we were at before we, we've been here 10 years, but before we came here. And, um, and those church people that clearly see how this mirrors the gospel and clearly see the beauty and love that's, going, that's being poured into this, they want to support uh, people mm-hmm. that are going through this process. They want to you know, give. And so we, we went through that process of just, we had some fundraisers and whatnot, but people would just willingly give us uh, money. And then at the same time, there are uh, there's a host of adoption funds out there for people that are seeking to do this, Christian ones, where they have a, um, a, a, a group of, or a bank of money and they hope to give to people like us. And we were able to contact those places and, and go through the application process. And, I, and I'll say this, for those who feel like it's, it's way too much, I may have thought that too, but in all four of our adoptions, we were we were we never lacked at the time when it was when we needed to spend mm. uh, money. The we Lord always supplied. had it available. The Lord always supplied um, the money for us, and so you can look at it and see that big figure and feel like no way. But I, I don't think that should be your mindset. If the Lord's put this on your heart or calling you to do this, or you you aren't able to have children the natural way, and He's opening this door, then I think the Lord will supply. And and I think being part of a strong church is crucial to mm. that. Do you think there are special cautions uh, for people um, when it comes to adoption? Do you, do you think there are things that people need to really think through hmm. before they embark on this? Um, your children, you received them when they were infants. Yeah, three months. Some people birth. are adopting children, you know, even in their teenage years. Yeah. So do you think there are, are issues that people need to really think through before they begin there? Yeah, I, I would say um, we have adopted all of our children when they were either at birth, like the first week they mm-hmm. were born, or at three months or so. And so we always had them from the very beginning. Um, there, are, there are challenges to that, as most parents have, have all experienced. Um, but uh, the, I guess one of the challenges is there is a kind of temptation you might feel of withholding from these children as they grow and mature and they come to an understanding of what's going on, of withholding information from them as to how they came into your family, mm. especially if you're maybe adopting where you have the same ethnicity or same color skin. Um, in our family, it's it's not that case. It's yeah. pretty obvious you've been adopted. Um, but there can be a kind of temptation to withhold that because it might be painful or traumatic. Most birth mothers go through a traumatic experience, which has led them to adoption uh, adoption as an option. And um, and I'm I'm not always sure that's the wisest course of action. Obviously, the children the child needs to be age appropriate before you share this this information. But it can be um, damaging to them maybe uh, later on if they don't even realize they've been adopted until it's it's a bit too late. So that's one that's one caution I would give. We have never adopted older children, but we have many friends, even here, mm-hmm. founders who have adopted older children. I think those homes need to be strong and secure, completely. Um, you know, the the marriage relationship needs to be strong, completely. Um, submissive to the Word of God and to the ministry of the of the church, and I think that's what guides those homes because they're going to face uh, some trials that even other families may not have faced. Mm-hmm. Even we expect to hear some or to have some conversations with our children as they get older that um, some other families have not really had before. 
just given the fact that there has been adoption. But, you know, our, our minds are fixed on Christ and on Scripture, and we desire to serve the Lord and love Him in how we instruct our children. We want to be biblical in how we raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And we know that the Lord will guide us through those things as, as we get there. Any final words of advice, counsel, you would offer on this subject? What were, were some things if you could just pass on, if you had uh, you know, two or three items you just could pass on to anyone about this issue, what yeah. would they be? Um, well, number one, maybe not everybody's called to do this. Mm -hmm. um, you don't, even though it's out there and you know that there's a great need, because there is, you know, from the estimations are something like 150 million children around the world that are, that are uh, orphans. And so there's obviously a need, but not everybody's called to do this so you can support adoption in other ways, including friends. We've had many friends support us um, because they see what we're going through. So I would encourage that. And, um, but then secondly, um, even though you might have had biological children, um, you can still adopt, uh, and, and that is a good and beautiful thing. And even in, in this church, it's wonderful yeah. to see um, families that, are, that, are, um, that have gone both those paths. That's encouraging as well. Um, you know, I, w I would say that, um, that it, it is wise to consider how physical adoption in the, in the world today, how it does mirror the gospel, as we said earlier. And I think that really um, gives you a fuller understanding of what God has really done, just considering it, the, the analogy or the sim symbolism in it, considering what God has really done in calling you out of darkness into light and into his family. Mm -hmm. we, and in fact, Paul even says, you're truly sons of Abraham. Amen. Because you're united to Christ, you don't need, you don't need the the Jewish blood. You have Christ, mm -hmm. and and that has made um, our adoption and at least observing it, um, going through it and then observing it in other people has made our understanding of the gospel much more fuller. It seems to be a key, and I guess we'll finish with this, Josh. Just like to hear your response to this. It seems to me that that would be um, the key with respect to some of the unique difficulties. So. You reach an age where a child says, well, you're not even my dad. Mm, yeah. Or think about a situation where you have adopted children and natural children in the same family, and maybe some of the conflict that could go on there. Uh, one child maybe feeling a sense of, of priority because they were conceived naturally in the family and the other child was adopted. Uh, or maybe the, the adopted child feel, feeling somewhat inferior because they weren't naturally conceived in that family. Gospel truth answers these challenges, doesn't it? I mean, to, to be able to say, yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is all of our story. Yeah. We've all been adopted. Yeah. Uh, God's family uh, requires adoption. Mm. Uh, it, it would seem to me that that answers the question, are you really my son? You're really my son. Yeah, really my You're son. really my son. Is this really my brother? This is really your brother. Mm -hmm. Do I have a place or priority? No, you're, you're on the same mm -hmm. ground mm -hmm. uh, because adoption brings you truly into this family. Mm -hmm. uh, have you found that to be the case? Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the, uh, as I said earlier, the joys and, and beauty of this is looking down at these children and saying, these are truly my children. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they might look a little different than I do, but, but in God's uh, great providence, they truly are my sons and daughters, and I love them with the love a father has for his son, just as um, the Lord our Father loves us with a, through the love that He has with His Son and by His Spirit. So I think we can um, experience all of, the, all of the fruits that come with knowing that we're truly children of, of God through Christ, uh, even when, when looking at a family like ours or other families and seeing their adoptions. Amen. Thank you, Joe. All right, thank you. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener-supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels, so be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.